Distributed audio is oftentimes a scary and confusing endeavor for those unfamiliar with best practices and the hardware necessary to deliver an effective multi-room audio system. Multiple amplifiers, streaming devices, bus inputs, and what do you do with the volume knobs? Well, worry no more. Juke Audio is here to simplify that process and bring accessibility to those who couldn't afford to get that whole house speaker system before. Today, I'll be focusing on the Juke Plus as it's the newest and most capable of the three units Juke has available. They also have the Juke 6 and Juke 8, which are the two original amps they've had on the market for some time now. Unboxing the Juke Plus is very straightforward. First, we find a cardboard accessory box with the Juke logo, and inside we can find a power cable, ethernet cable, Wi-Fi antenna, rack ears, and a bunch of blue Phoenix connectors. More on these later. Underneath the accessory box, we have the Juke Plus, held in place with two large pieces of packing foam. The Juke Plus isn't a flashy product on the surface, but that's to be expected. It's designed to be installed in a rack or on a shelf in a rack, somewhere nondescript where you won't be displaying it for the public eye. We have a black anodized metal chassis with a Wi-Fi antenna on the front and a big red power switch. Moving around to the back panel of the Juke Plus, we have a couple of familiar jacks and some that may look a little foreign. We have our ethernet connection, USB ports that I'll have more details on later, RCA in and out, and an optical in and out. The speaker terminations use Phoenix connectors, which is a standard found mostly in the custom installation side of the AV business, and less common on consumer level products like this. To connect speaker wire into these, you'll need a smaller flathead screwdriver to loosen the bolt that locks in the wire. Once the opening is wide enough, twist your wire into a fine point and thread it into the opening, and tighten the screw down to lock the wire in place. Then you can plug the connector into the receptacle on the amplifier and you're good to go. A little more work than your typical spring clip or binding post, but you have a much more secure and reliable connection for sure. The back sides of the Juke 8 and 6 are less involved and only have the ethernet, USB ports, and the Phoenix connectors for speaker wire. Something to note about the USB ports is that they do support music playback, but only with a specialized USB to analog adapter. I wasn't able to personally test this particular feature, but other sources confirm it works if you really need to connect an analog source into the Juke 6 or 8, for example. The Juke mobile app is mostly a configuration tool. From here, you can set up your Juke amp for the first time and label your separate zones. Zone names can be anything from kid's bedroom to back porch, for example. Really, you're just naming the amp channels that are connected to the corresponding speakers in the room or location they reside in. To control music playback in these zones, Juke really pushes you to use one of the several wireless playback options they support. With the Juke Plus, however, you are able to use the app to set custom EQ curves for each of the six zones. All of these features are also available from a web-based interface if you prefer to work from a laptop or computer for the setup process or make tweaks to your system down the road. Juke supports four forms of wireless music playback, for now at least, and they are AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect, Bluetooth 5.0, and DLNA. AirPlay is great and was what I used to test out the Juke amps, and Spotify Connect is also fantastic seeing as their user base for Spotify is massive. Bluetooth 5.0 is a great fallback if you don't have an iOS device or use Spotify. DLNA, which stands for Digital Living Network Alliance, allows you to stream music off of music servers, computers, or NAS drives. The real benefit with these playback options is the flexibility and ease of use. Fire up your favorite streaming service and it will connect to the Juke amp. No need for a proprietary app to communicate with Juke. So if you're a dedicated Spotify listener, prefer Apple Music, Pandora, Tidal, or any other music service, you are good to go. The Juke Plus is a six zone, 12 channel amplifier with 100 watts per channel. That means you can have up to 12 speakers connected, configured into six stereo pairs connected to this amplifier. Each pair is addressed via AirPlay or Spotify Connect as a separate zone and can be controlled independently of each other. 
But what happens if you want to connect to more than six zones? Well, you can simply get a second or third amp to add more zones to your system. And as long as each amp is on the same network, they will see each other and allow you to expand your system throughout your home. This also allows any source, whether streaming or physical input, to be played in any room. Finally, you can even mix and match the different Juke amp models on the same network. Normally, to do what the Juke amps can do, you would need several more devices. Let's look at a similar six zone setup with some generic parts. With Juke, all you need is a source and the Juke Plus for $2,500. To do a six zone setup in a more traditional way, you need a six zone amp, which goes for about $2,000, plus six network streaming devices going for about $450 a piece. So $2,700 total. That's a combined cost of $4,700 for both the streamers and the amp. Almost double the price of the Juke Plus. A huge win for Juke Audio. Incredibly cost effective for a basic six zone multi-room audio setup. The Juke 6 and Juke 8 were Juke's first products, followed more recently with the Juke Plus. The only difference between the Juke 6 and Juke 8 are the number of zones and channels available. The Juke 6 is offering 6 zones with 12 channels, while the Juke 8 has 8 zones and 16 channels. Comparing the Juke 6 and the Juke 8 to the Juke Plus, the Juke Plus is going to offer more power per channel at 100 watts versus 40 watts in the 6 and 8. The Juke Plus has analog and digital inputs, which you can use for external sources. And the Juke Plus also gives you the ability to use the equalizer found in the mobile app to customize each zone to your liking. And the final difference being the price. Of course, starting at 1500 for the Juke 6 and going up to 2500 for the Juke Plus. In closing, I think the Juke lineup of amps is a great value and a much needed addition into the world of multi-room audio. Oftentimes, the pricing of a traditional distributed audio system can be intimidating, on top of complicated installation procedures. I'm glad Juke has made it simpler to install and brought down the price of entry. All in all, a great option for people looking to have music piped through the whole house, and I hope to see more innovation and additions from Juke Audio. Thank you for joining me for our review of the Juke Plus 6 Zone Wireless Streaming Audio Amplifier. You can learn more about this online at WorldWideStereo.com, or if you're in the area, you can stop by our showroom in Montgomeryville, PA. We offer 60-day returns, free shipping on all orders, and we're authorized dealers for everything we sell. If you have any feedback or questions, leave them in the comment section down below, or you can call or email us at any time. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. This is Chris from Worldwide Stereo. Thanks for tuning in.